Hey guys, today we're going to um, find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi and we are going to SSH to the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to make a remote connection to it. So, um, and we're not going to SSH using this terminal. This is just the old fashioned Windows command prompt. It's not even PowerShell. We're not going to be using PowerShell. We're going to be using PuTTY and we're going to be using Nmap to find the device. So um, I already have Nmap installed and I'm not going to show you how to install that in this video, but um, I am going to show you how to install PuTTY. So uh, let's see here. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're on the same network as your Raspberry Pi, whether that be wireless or, or wired. So in this case, I'm on Wi-Fi because I'm on my Windows laptop. So we're going to connect to our, our um, we're going to SSH to our Raspberry Pi um, from our Windows laptop to um, you know, you using SSH. So I, I've already done the same video for Android and for Linux, and I'm also gonna do it for iOS and uh, also for Mac OS. So, um, <clears throat> and I, I don't know which order I'm gonna post them in, and I, I may very well just um, combine all these videos together. So anyways, let's, the first thing, after you make sure you're on the correct network, which in this case is TreeFrog 5G, um, so, that's the same network my Raspberry Pi is on. You're going to check your IP address. So do IP config. And in this case, my IP is 192.168.0.110. So the network is basically pretty much expected. Like this is the default for most uh, most private networks. So your, you know, your, your home Wi-Fi probably gives you this network. And um, it could give you something else to so just check in case. And um, there are, like I have configured things differently in the past. But um, and this this last bit is the actual um, that this is the full IP for my host. So in, anyways, um, so 110 is my laptop. Now we're, that's important. Um, let, let me see if I can remember the switches for this. So step one, we're going to find our Raspberry Pi using Nmap. So um, let, me, let me see if this gives me a quick. Um, let, let me see if this doesn't have any print any built-in scans. So let me see, actually it does, it has port scans right here. So ping scan, there we go, SN for ping scan. I, I could have sworn it was um, SP, but in, anyways, um, <clears throat> 192.168.0. Um, yeah, that didn't work out because my, uh, We just want a regular old ping scan. All right, so, and numlock needs to be on. All right, here we go. 192.168.0.1-255. So we're giving it the range of IPs. <clears throat> so you give, give it the network and then the, you know, the starting and the ending. So you can specify, you know, all IPs from 1 to 255 this way. So all the IPs on this network, we're going to scan them. So I'm gonna hit scan. So that's why we looked up our, our IP address. So <clears throat> even though um, we're looking, we're trying to find my Raspberry Pi, um, we look, I look up my own IP address first just to find out what network I'm on because I know it's on the same network and then I scan that network to find the IP of my, uh, of my Raspberry Pi. And we can see there's a few things connected to my network right now and it identifies the Raspberry Pi already. So the Raspberry Pi is actually um, this guy right here. So um, <clears throat> let's see, and it doesn't give me my own. So Nmap scan report, this last one is, is my, that's me. So um, this guy right here is a, so 231, that is my Raspberry Pi. And it identifies it based on the MAC address, it knows it's a Raspberry Pi. Otherwise, you would have to guess and just take all of these and guess which one it is. So I, I have some some uh, Lenovo device connected here. Um, I have a TP-Link. This is, um, yeah, I should go through and check what each of these are. And, and this would be the, yeah, so TP-Link is, is my uh, router right there. So, um, you know, IP is, is one. <clears throat> and, and anyway, so... Um, yeah, Apple would have to be my, my iPad. And so, all right, so the, we, we found the IP for our, it's, it's this right here, the IP for our Raspberry Pi. So now we're gonna SSH to it. And to do that, we're gonna need PuTTY. So um, 
let me see here. I forget what, all right, so nothing I need to, I, I forgot what even tabs I have open, but not, nothing I'm gonna have to cut out of this video. So anyways, <clears throat> um, so basically you just search for putty like this. The first thing that comes up, this is the official site. It, it's this long, weird looking URL, but this is the correct one. And if you go to putty.org and click on download, it's gonna bring you here anyways. So just go here for putty. And <clears throat> I don't like putty at all. I, I prefer using like console or GNOME terminal or any anything on Linux much better than putty on Windows. And um, I, I just don't like putty. I, I don't know why. It's just, um, it just doesn't feel right. Um, I, I, I even like the terminal on Mac OS better than Putty. And that's not to say I dislike Windows or anything. Windows has this pretty slick, I actually like the Windows interface. I actually like the Windows 10 menu a lot. So um, I'm not a Microsoft hater or anything. I'm not trying to bash Microsoft. And um, Putty's not even a Microsoft tool. I actually think PowerShell is pretty neat. I'd have to, I have to look into getting SSH installed for that if that's even doable. I have not looked into that. Um, so anyways, um, I'm gonna just go with the installer, the 64-bit installer. Just download that and um, <clears throat> take takes a few seconds, but um, <clears throat> not long enough that I'm likely to even cut this out of the video. So we are, and if you're looking up how to SSH to a Raspberry Pi from Windows, you probably aren't familiar with installing PuTTY, otherwise you wouldn't be looking that up. So I'm assuming that is, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's, that's relevant. Anyways, um, click run, next, next, next. And um, yes, so we're just gonna let this, uh, let this install here. And then we're gonna go search for PuTTY and um, pin to start menu. I, I just like to pin it to the start menu with everything else. Um, I actually really like the start menu. So we're gonna click on the icon to launch Putty and this is Putty. So I, I guess the first thing I dislike about Putty, and I shouldn't knock it too much because it's not terrible. It has all sorts of great features and it's pretty solid and it works great. But with a normal terminal, like on Linux, you just click on the terminal and even on Mac OS, you open the terminal and you have a terminal on the local system already logged into your local system and then you SSH out to another system. With this, it doesn't open a terminal on your local system. It SSHs out to the to the remote system and only then creates a opens a terminal for you. So it's not like you can <clears throat> just open this open it on your your local system first and interact with your local system before connecting remotely. So that's a bit of a pain and it's just I, I don't like how it does that. But um, yeah, it is what it is. There are other options, but this is the default. Um, like this is the most common thing that, this is the most common pe tool that people use on Windows to SSH to things. Like this is by far the most common tool. So I'm gonna just put this in here and uh, I'm just gonna name the session after the same thing. Um, you know, the same as the IP address cause I'm not feeling creative. Save the session so later I can just double click on it. Um, and I like to change the colors just because um, um, yeah, I, I just, that, that's just how I am. So I'm gonna take the time to do this. Um, apologies if, if you just wanted me to get to showing you how to use this. Um, so I'm gonna make the foreground green and the background I believe should already be black by default. So just green on black is easy on the eyes. Um, so change that to green and save the profile again. And let's try opening it. And this asks us, hey, this says we don't recognize the fingerprint and that's expected because we've never connected to this host before. So now if we had connected it to it before and, this, and it came up with this alert, it might look like something funny is going on and, and there are hackers on our network or whatever. Um, not gonna get into detail on that in this video, but um, the first time you ever connect to it, it's gonna come up with this and you just say, yes, it's, it's okay. So now you're gonna type in your username. So default name is pi um, I, I'm still using that username on my Raspberry Pi, so Pi, and then type in your password. And there we go, we're logged into our Raspberry Pi. And this is our green on black, green on back, black coloring, so that, that is nice and everything. <clears throat> so clear, um, you know, you can run your basic Unix commands, um, uptime, so it's, it's been up for a little while. It's just sitting here plugged in, connected to Wi-Fi. I've been connecting it to it from my iPad and my, and my Android phone. Um, uh, 
Uh, there's a little bit of info on the system. I don't know. There you go, you can look at your CPU info, whatever else. But yeah, here we have our fully functional command line on, um, so, so here's our fully functional command line. We're connected to it using PuTTY. Um, so this is not a bad terminal. Um, I, I think another reason that I dislike PuTTY is that um, I, I just use it on a lot of Windows desktops at different companies that I work for and they tend to be configured really horribly. So generally the experience on any work Windows desktop is pretty terrible. Whereas this desktop is mine and I've configured it myself and it looks and feels really nice and performs nicely. Um, so there's that, I guess. I, so I guess the experience is a little bit nicer on, on my own desktop. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. You, you basically install put, you, so um, to find your Raspberry Pi, you're gonna install and use nmap, and zenmap is the front end GUI for nmap. And this is the command you would run if you were on the command line, um, you know, update it for your network. So use, use, use the zenmap nmap GUI to find your Raspberry Pi. And if, if it didn't happen to figure out that it, which one is the Raspberry Pi, you can just check each one of them. And to connect to it, you use PuTTY. So just search and, and grab PuTTY from the official site and download it and launch it, you know, put in your IP address and everything and connect to the server. Um, you'll, you'll have to make sure your um, Raspberry Pi is configured to accept SSH connections before you do this. So you'll have had to have done that before. Um, I'm going to include that in um, the main video where I, <clears throat> I'm gonna have a combined video where I, I um, cover connecting to it from all different systems and where I show how I set up the Raspberry Pi itself. But um, if you, yeah, so if, if I happen to create a separate video, I haven't decided if I'm gonna create this, make this um, connecting from Windows video a separate small video without showing how I set up the Pi. But if you didn't, if you're watching this video and you haven't seen me, um, and you, and you didn't see how I connected to, or how I set up SSH on the Raspberry Pi, just go back and look at my other videos. I'm definitely gonna have one in there that shows you how to set up SSH on the Raspberry Pi. It might be the larger compilation video, but just take a, I haven't decided, I'm recording a ton of these videos at once, and I haven't published any of them yet. So I haven't done any of the video editing or anything yet. But um, yeah, just, just take a look at that. Look at the other videos I've published. There's a lot more information on the Raspberry Pi. So if you found this helpful at all, um, you know, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. If you wanna, and you, you can also just hit that, that bell icon just so you see um, any of my, just so you get an alert when any, any of my other uh, videos are, are released. And um, you know, if you have any questions, just leave a question down in the comments below. If you have any comments, criticism, anything you wanna say, anything you wanna let me know, just leave a comment down below. I wanna hear what you think. Um, and I try to get back to all comments um, if I have time. I don't have a ton of them yet, so probably I will be able to respond to every comment. But um, 